is on the train, so they run past him, and he hops down and starts running in the opposite At direction. At some point, a, a dog randomly yes. comes into the shot and starts running with him, and, and you it think seems, that it kind of just go with it. You think the dog's going to attack him, like it's a it's a attack dog in the train yard, or it's a police dog, but no, it's just running right alongside him. And, and he hides... W- uh, well, you don't know he's with the dog, but he pops. They run past, and he pops out of this train car right behind him, just like Scooby Doo. And the dog is with him, and he's like, "Oh, come on!" He's like waving his hands yeah. to the dog. Like, Let's go. Yeah, like the and <laughs> and the the agents have their guns in their hands the whole time. Yet they never fire a shot. They're just like, "Yeah, we'll just have the guns in our hands while we run, but we're not going to use them." So he he gets away, goes back to. Uh, his apartment well he he ends up in like a on a roof somehow oh, yeah, 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 yeah. and he comes climbing down this ladder uh which is very awkward because he's taking real long strides coming down this ladder and his shorts we're looking up. right up his little yeah. short shorts and so he just drops down off this ladder and there's some old man sitting in a car that he walks up to turns out this guy's like a university professor that he's selling these illegal egyptian artifacts to and and banning before he says a word, pulls a beer out of the crotch of his shorts. Yeah, somehow in these short shorts, he had a Miller High Life tucked in during and he the just whole chase. Whips it out and 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 downs this puppy. Yes. So Banning sells or like trades for money or w- whatever this little trinket to the dude in the car, and it, then it goes back to his apartment. And it, well, it shows uh, uh, the airport, LAX. Presumably. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And the mummy. Who now she, looks She took a flight normal. from a direct flight from Egypt to LAX. Yeah, and she's a she's a mummy from ancient Egypt who just knows how to use planes and everything. And she's wearing this like cheesecloth outfit that's completely yes, see through. There's it, some THO going on. It's awkward and that's it catches your attention. But yeah, she just gets off the plane and takes a taxi to uh, Banning's apartment because she somehow knows where this dude lives. Yes. So she shows up and. He, she, okay. She holds her. She acts like she's gonna fuck him. Yeah, she. She it, throws it him on the totally bed. Totally leads up to she's gonna have sex with this guy. She's straddling him, and she holds her hand up, and it starts glowing red. And then all of a sudden, it goes down to this little point, and then turns into a scarab beetle. And she looks up at her hand like she's surprised, like, "Oh shit, yeah. I, I didn't know I was gonna yeah, summon whoops. a scarab." Whoa! <laughs> I'll just go with this, and. She like puts it on his chest and it burrows into Just his heart immediately into into his skin and under. Which for a low budget movie actually had pretty yeah, good. That effects. was pretty decent. It was pretty cool. Um, and he goes, "Oh, are you from the IRS?" <laughs> like, really? <laughs> but yeah, so she she puts this scare beetle on him and it burrows in and she ex- goes into the whole thing about um, ex- explaining to him that. This is so she can control him, blah, blah, blah. But he, he passes out from the pain. And when he wakes back up, he reaches under his pillow. And you think, ah, he probably has a gun under there. And he's going to try and shoot her. No. And she goes, oh, were you looking for this? And you totally expect for her to pull a handgun out and be like, ah, you thought you were going to kill me. But she pulls another beer bottle out. Another Miller High Life <laughs> for banning. So so the scare beetle is supposedly attached to his heart or something to where she can control him just by, like, looking at him. She does, like, this uh, Darth Vader force hand and gesture. And he all of a sudden clasps his chest like he's having a heart attack. So that's how she's going to control him. So now it cuts to two people we've never seen before up to this point. It, well, it, well, you see a car pulling into the driveway, yeah. just pulling in like it's just getting there, and then you see a son walking down a hallway to an old man who's sitting at a desk. Old dude is, show, is examining this like gold scarab, which presumably came from this chick's tomb, and the son is like, "Oh, hey, dad, what? Like, what are you doing?" And this this dad. It's a really weird dynamic between the father and son. There's a strange son. dynamic going on. The dad is really over-informed about the son's sex life. Uh, the son's yes. supposed to be like a player, even though he's kind of this gangly, awkward guy yes. who, who looks like he's about 30 or 35 <laughs> and still living with his dad. His dad. And he's like, oh, you're going to be out late again tonight? And and the son's like, oh, yeah. And he's like, who, who is it this tonight? He's like, oh, it's Tanya. Oh, no, I mean, it's uh, Susie. Like, he can't get the names right, but he's obviously overplaying the fact that he has so many women in his life he can't. Keep it straight. This guy's, this guy's pretty awkward. But the dad has this weird dialogue thing where he kind of emphasizes the last word of every sentence he yes. says. It like he was a, a theater actor or something, and he's like, "Who are you going out with tonight? <laughs> what are you going to be doing?" And like, it's it's really really weird. So 
Yeah, so the son says, oh, I'm leaving now, Dad, even though he just pulled up in his car. He gets there just to say bye. Yeah, and then he leaves, and you see the mummy standing awkwardly in the bushes, because she knows where this guy lives, too, somehow. So she kills the dude and takes the scarab. Because, yeah, he had bought a gold scarab off of Banning, which you never see that in the movie. He just has this gold scarab. So then it cuts to the the crime scene of, of this guy being dead and the son's crying and yeah when when she kills him blood squirt, squirts out of his neck and face even though she like shoves her hand into his heart. So the crime scene there's the, the little like white tape outline of where his body was and it's strangely really tiny it's like a child yes. size yeah. outline of this dude who's and like one leg's really skinny dude. it's <laughs> it's awkward. They, you think they could have just like laid an actor down to put the tape around him but. <laughs> They just kind of eyeballed it or something. Yes. And so. And the detective is terrible. Like he, I don't know how he ever became a detective. The detective is this like pushy New York guy, and he's overly skeptical about everything, even really like mundane, plain things people say. He's like, oh really? I, I don't know about that. And like, yeah, the dad has some friend there, or some guy who says he's the dad's friend was like, oh yeah, I see him all the time. And the cops like, really? Like, like he's yeah, suspicious. I'm sure. Yeah, and then he's like an asshole to the son. He's like, yeah. people die every day. Like, That's yeah, Hollywood. People get murdered every day. It's Hollywood. Yeah, and, and he's it, he's like, oh, sorry about your father. Yeah, and like it, it's terrible. So immediately after the cops leave, they go to messing with the crime scene and rooting through all the dad's paperwork and stuff. And there's like probably like you know fingerprints and there's the tape still there. But they're just like, oh, we gotta go look through his papers to find out what where what he was doing. And and before the son had walked in, the dad had been on the phone with. Um, another professor, professor. At the university. Yeah, and uh, the professor had been really interested in the gold scarab and he wanted to buy it, but the father didn't want to sell it. But then the professor made a deal that the father couldn't refuse, so he agreed to meet with him the next day. So they find out that the dad was going to meet with this guy at the university, presumably about the artifacts. Yes. So that's the only lead they have. So the because the, they notice the only thing missing is the golden scarab that he so had just bought. The, the, older professor type guy that was the best friend with the dad and then the son go to the the university and meet with this guy which i've realized that there's three old men there's a lot of old professors yeah, in this movie they, actually there's four old professors <laughs> so it gets kind of awkward trying to keep them in line the old professor movie yes. most of them get killed anyway yeah, so it's that's not like true, it matters so you don't really have to keep up um so they go and they're talking to this guy and he's all concerned about the dude's death and he's covering up the fact that they had this this like golden scarab thing going on and the nephritis thing and he's he's being all shysty about it. And as they're meeting, this girl, this nerdy awkward girl bursts in the room. She's like, Oh, hi, uncle. Yeah. And like she's, she's like, very oh, you're socially in a, you're in a awkward. Meeting. She's clutching these books in her hand and I think the director just told her, oh, uh, keep clutching the books and, and look nervously at each person in the room really fast. Because the whole time she's like, oh, oh yeah. is, like it's really awkward. Yes. And uh, so somehow they, they kind of hit a dead end and they leave the office. Well, well the, yeah, the, the uh, friend of the father and the son realize, well, the friend of the father makes the assumption that the niece somehow knows information that – the professor wasn't telling him, so he tells his son, "Hey, uh, you need to go get the information from her." But he kind of implies, like, He's yeah, sleep like, with yeah, her. You know, you have a reputation. You're a player, Mister Awkward, yeah. nerdy guy. So go get the info from her. Better looking. Uh, he's like, oh, you know, go uh, make some moves on this chick, and we'll get info about her uncle. So they just have an awkward conversation between the awkward player and the awkward. The nerdy girl, yeah, who's always clutching something and looking nervously around through her Coke bottle glasses. <laughs> and they, there's, they're sitting at this like picnic table on the campus talking, and there's like 20 Pepsi cups in front of them. Like they were just downing Pepsi yes. in this conversation. Um, somehow she concludes that John Banning is the one that can help. Them. I yeah. think she, she's like, oh, my, my uncle was talking to someone named John Banning on the phone. So they track him down, and he's he's playing pinball. I, I don't know if it's at, at, at the strip club. Yeah, or? it's like a, a bar or something. Yeah, it could be the same strip club. So but he's, he's got he's got this heart scarab thing, and he's got his own shit going on. He's like, oh, I can't help you. Yeah, he's all pissy. At again. this point, it's safe to say that John Banning is like no longer our protagonist, and it's shifted to this nerdy yeah. quote unquote player. Yeah, which is weird because yeah, it just sw- shifts. And it's very awkward about it. It's kind of like the movie Psycho, where the protagonist changes halfway through, but it's not a good movie yeah. like Psycho. <laughs> um, so they go to the, another gray-haired professor yes. who is friends with her uncle professor and I guess also the son's dad professor probably. And 
he's like, oh, well, I gave your uncle notes on this nephritis woman, and and she's she comes up with this terrible lie about, oh, he lost, he lost his notes. Them. He's yeah. so forgetful. And they keep her and the son keep looking at each other like, eh, huh? Like, <laughs> and and the guy's like, oh, oh like, okay, I'll tell you here. everything that again. Seems like a good explanation, yeah. and just spills the beans about everything about this mysterious nephritis chick. So now nephritis is is at. A bar, and, uh, yeah, hanging uh, out bar. in a new skanky outfit that you can yes. see her, her tits through, and uh, <laughs> yeah, give, the, the person who the the person who was in charge of the outfits was like maybe a prior prostitute who had all these skanky outfits. They keep laying putting around. her in random evening gowns with, that are like really low cut. Yes. So she's eyeing this lady with this weird puffball hairstyle <laughs> on the front of her head. It's so weird. And they kind of exchange eyes for like two minutes. And, and you realize that she's playing the lesbian There's card. a lesbian connection yeah. going on. They're, they're, they're going to hook up. So cuts to them at some apartment. Uh, apartment. I think it was a hotel room, hotel but room? I don't know it for sure. looked like an apartment. Yeah. And... And the girl, the lesbian from the bar is all naked. Yeah, and she drops like, her robe in front of the bed and she and pulls the like, covers back. Let's get to this. And she pulls the covers back and there's a bunch of snakes. And somehow the snakes kill her. Yeah, she, like she uh, she falls onto the bed. Like she doesn't back up. She just falls dead. onto the bed. And they're constrictors, not venomous snakes. And she doesn't have a bite on her. They're not wrapped around or anything. She's just dead under these snakes. And they talk about Nefreda's needing like a female sacrifice. So you assume, okay, this is this female sacrifice. It's a woman. That's but that's the only her. time you see the dead lesbian. But yeah, never never tied up. So then the 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 player son and the nerdy girl are go supposed on to go on a date. Awkward date. Very and awkward date. Looking for Banning again. Looking for Banning. Yeah, they're I, like, well, we're gonna go look for Banning, they, but they it's clearly needed, a date. They needed a reason for them to go on a date. Yes. So they're like, yeah, good enough. So they're like, there's this montage, an '80s music montage of them. At, in Hollywood at night and there's all the neon lights and they're like, Oh yeah, the, the, we're in the city. And then they go to this dance club and there's like people awkwardly, really, really awkwardly dancing. And he's like, he's like, what do you, what do you want to drink? And she's like, Oh, I'll have a uh, vodka. Like she's heard that name of vodka. She's, on the rocks. Drink anything. She's like, uh, oh, vodka. That's a, that's a drink. Right. Yeah. And, and so he goes and gets, I think he gets himself a Miller High Life, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. Uh, no, it was a different one. Uh, it was in a green bottle, yeah, but okay. I, they didn't show the he label. He gets himself a Heineken or something. Yeah. And um, <laughs> while he's getting the drink, DeFreitas shows up in this bar, and across the dance floor is eyeing the nerdy girl, and you're like, oh, God. And the nerdy girl recognizes that this is a threat. The nerdy girl has threat. this, like, completely, like, confused, like, who? Huh? Even though the and, nerdy girl doesn't have her glasses on, yeah. and she's completely blind without them, she, like, recognizes that this is a threat, but, eh, I can and, see her so across So you're, like, thinking, oh, God, it's another lesbian connection, and then she just kind of vanishes. The dude shows up again, and... Uh, um, he he shows up and Nefretis disappears and and the awkward girl's like oh she was right there and he goes well what does she look like she's like I don't know and she's like trying to put her glasses back on and stuff and Nefretis like keeps on popping up behind people and the girl can see her but the guy never gets to see her so then somehow Nefretis is back at the university or wait was she even ever at the university I don't I don't think so. th- I don't think she's, she's ever at, shown the up at the university in the uncle's office and the uncle's like waiting for her because he had explained to the the niece like oh I want to interview this mummy because or this fair whatever the hell she is yeah. because it's like it's like getting to interview Genghis Khan like, or Hitler like. or yeah the chance of a lifetime so she shows up and she's all glowing and he's like hey let's let's interview and she's like they they keep alluding that like they know each other or something. Yeah. Like there's a strange familiarity between the two of them, but uh, that's I guess just poor writing. Yeah. Um, and, and, and she alludes uh, again, like with the the old man that she killed before. She alluded she was gonna have sex with him too, and then it seems like her and the professor might hook up. But it doesn't happen. Nothing. She just kills Nada. him with awesome ass lightning bolts she that come out of her hands. Emperor Palpatine lightning. Yes, that's takes, exactly what I thought yeah. of too. It takes like five minutes to kill him. Yeah, she's, she's kind of crumbling in the out. corner. He's like, ugh. Yeah. And and then as she's she gets the whatever the hell from him. It's like a necklace. Yeah, it's like a necklace with a I don't know like a pendant on it or yeah, Horus some or whatever weird it is. Thing. And so. But he he also holds up like a cross to her. He holds like, an onk up, yeah. like it like it's it's gonna like kill it's her a cross like, that that scares vampires away. And she's like, ha, ah, that doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, and so the other professor shows up after he's dead. The 
which one is it even? It's the, the, the it's, uncle. It's the, <laughs> yeah, see, this is the, the old man. The son's dad who was killed in the beginning. It's his friend. Yeah, this it's, is the, the four old man that gets really confusing. Yeah.